a lot of these individuals that you see out today that call themselves mores. Now, for some of you, you may not be aware of this, so let me help you out, okay? Now, again, there are people who may call themselves mores, and they seem they pretty nice people, or they're doing the best they can with what they know, okay? So this is not meant to be a derogatory as in a personal attack on anyone in particular. It's not, okay? What we're looking at is the position. That's what we're looking at, okay? And the what the position has meant for us as a people. That's what we're talking about, okay? We're not talking about someone's, we're not going in any, we ain't talking about someone's mama, we ain't talking about anybody's children. We're not doing any of that petty stuff, okay? Which is looking at the position. Let's start off with the preacher. Let's start off with just a regular black preacher. The purpose and the role, the main role of the preacher is to make sure that you stay tied to the Bible, okay? That, you know, so however they preach, you know, they may have a good voice. They can sing. They can, you know, go through all the, ah, they can take you through all that stuff. But all what they do, at the end of the end of the day, their mission, their goal is to make sure they keep you tied to the book that was given to you by your um, oppressors. That's their goal at the end of the day. It, it, it doesn't you can't get around it. That's their mission. That's their goal. They may be very nice people. They may be very loving. They may be very helpful. They may have helped you when you were in a hard place or whatever. But besides all of that. At the end of the day, that is their job. That's their responsibility. Now, likewise, when you get to people who may have left, quote unquote, the church, churchianity, whatever you want to call it. And now I'm a Hebrew now. And so you left that space and now you're Hebrew. So now you look down at the people in the church and like, <laughs> yeah, these people, they need to get out of this church, man. They need to come over to Hebrew land because we much better over here, you know, but not, you know not really realizing that you pretty much one of the same people because why you're using the same manual that they're using. You're using the same manual. It's like if I have a room, right? And on one side of the room, I got skinheads on the other side of the room. I got the KKK. Now you as a black person walking in that situation, it ain't really going to matter. Well, you know, (laughs) You know, the KKK, they were really hardcore. Let me go over here to the skinheads. It doesn't matter. They still hate your black behind. It don't matter. Either way, they both. Why? Because they have a shared interest. All right. And that's preserving their whiteness, which, hey, that's what they want to do. They Cool. You, you do that. But where it crosses with us is when you take that out on black folks. So, their shared interest also includes a hatred towards you. So you're not safe in that room, period. Because why? They have a shared interest. Well, it's the same thing when you got Christians on one side of the room and Hebrews on the other side of the room. You have a shared interest. What's the shared interest? I'm glad you asked. It's the Bible. It's the preservation and the protection of the Bible. This same book. This manual that was given to you by your oppressors. Both have a shared interest in making sure they preserve it. Both of them do. So it doesn't matter. Now, one side may say, hey, listen, y'all whitewash this thing. And this book is really talking about us. So we're the ones that are really talking. It don't matter. 